You know, FNAF fan games are a dime a dozen. We've experienced all there is to offer with them, and these days, it's very rare you will find one truly unique and worthwhile to play. This is what I've thought for a long time, and is why I don't play them as often anymore. That was until seven months ago when I stumbled upon a fan game that truly defines a generation of horror and might be the holy grail of FNAF fan games, Five Nights at Heavy's 2. Released by Core Games and created by, sorry if I mispronounce this, Mikhail Kornichiko in 2015. So, join me as I tell you all about how much of an overlooked and unappreciated game this is. To start, I should probably explain what exactly a Heavy is. Heavy originates from the ever-so-popular FPS game Team Fortress 2, released by Valve in 2007. I still think it's wild that a game released 17 years ago can still be relevant to the present day. Although personally, I haven't played or seen much of TF2, so I'm afraid I can't really talk much about... Huh? Where's that banging coming from? Ah, there we go. Home sweet. Super? Who the fuck what are the you? fuck? What are you doing How'd house? you get here? How'd you even get in here? Wait, your house? This is my house. What? Are you out of your mind, Mushroom Man? This is my house. Whoops. I thought this was my house. Alright, alright, retrace for a sec. Why'd you even barge in here like that? Okay, fair question. I can answer that with my own... Wait... How do you know my name? We're friends, remember? Who are you? Nintendo Boy? Oh, you're the guy I forced to play Fine Nights at Heavies 2. <laughs> oh, good times, good times. Well, speaking of which, you actually came at a pretty opportune time. Do you know much about TF2? Do I? I've been playing that game since 2019 and sunk over 400 hours into it. I practically know it like the back of my hand. Great. Could you take the job of talking about the game in depth then? Could I? Well, I most certainly can. Team Fortress 2 is a first-person shooter made by Valve in 2007, being a sequel to the previous installment, Team Fortress Classic. Despite the competition and other issues playing the game nowadays, it has become a modern-day FPS staple for many people. How did this game become a modern-day staple and not get left behind in the dust, you might ask? Well, because it is a free-to-play game with so much charm, iconography, and depth that other games would kill to get even a fraction of. There's so much depth, in fact, that people spend thousands of hours practicing things like movement and aim alone. Combine all of that with nine iconic classes that have even more depth with their unlockable weapons, unique tools, playstyles, along with maps and all sorts of other cool shit, along with one of the most dedicated communities you'll ever see, it's no wonder why TF2 has such staying power despite being 17 years old. Okay, okay, I think we all get it, but what about Heavy? Huh? Oh, Heavy? Well, I personally don't play him all that much, but I can tell you this. He is a specialist class that pretty much acts like the tank of the group, thanks to his massive health pool, minigun, and slow speed. He is also widely considered to be the face of TF2 since he's pretty much appeared on all the TF2 promotional items and he's pretty much front and center on anything TF2 related. Speaking of Heavy, how is the Five Nights at Heavy's 2 game I forced you to play? Does it still leave you mentally scarred, Mushroom Man? Well, it's actually one of the most impressive FNAF fan games I've ever played. <laughs> Wait, what? That's right, and without further ado, let me now explain why this game should be held in high regard. First off, we have our obligatory phone call. What to do? And don't overuse power in office, it's dangerous. Uh, thanks, it. Uh, have a good night. Yeah. Oh, sh now you could poke fun at the voice acting all you want, but if this game was their first role, it's not half bad. Let me talk about the gameplay for Night 1, because it's actually quite the twist. 
We're not allowed to use the cameras, which use... Putters. Instead, we are treated to staring at our office space while we spam the flashlight to see if anyone is at our door. It also allows you to let your imagination flow, like making songs with the flashing noise. Let's not neglect our office, though. We have a delicious pretzel sitting on the desk, and occasionally a cardboard cutout of the medic appears, which is a cool little cameo. Upon beating Night 1, we play this little minigame here, which seems to be us stealing the intelligence from the red team. But whatever the hell that is, attacks us, and the minigame ends. I have to say, though, that cover of the TF2 theme kind of slaps. Night 2 is here, and we can finally use the monitor. This game seemingly has the mechanics from the original three FNAF games kind of mashed together. We have the door from FNAF 1, the mask and music box from FNAF 2, and the maintenance panel from FNAF 3. We use the door to keep Heavy and Sniper out, we cool down the servers on the cameras, and we make sure everything works here on the maintenance tab. Sniper can be warded off by the mask, and while Heavy also can, he can be a tougher cookie. The last character I'll discuss is the menace known as Negative Spy. A very quick warning will appear, notifying he'll jump scare you, and if you don't leave the monitor in like a single second, he'll mess everything up. Not to mention, he could probably get someone a seizure like goddamn. Anyways, the difficulty spike on Night 2 is quite high, but it gives you a nice challenge, so I can't knock it too much. Once we beat Night 2, we play this arcade style game where we collect 20 of these things, and afterwards we are thrown into Night 3. Okay, now we reach night four. We have a new threat to deal with, which judging by the subtitles, is a foxy s character. If he leaves the camera, close the door immediately. I would love to show that in action, but the heavy killed me and crashed my game, which is actually a good thing. See, I didn't want to spoil all the surprises in this video, so why not head over to the Game Jill page and try the game out for yourselves? Okay, seriously, don't actually play this game. I uploaded this on a specific date for a reason. I mean, this is genuinely one of the worst FNAF fan games I think I've ever played, and I wouldn't recommend it even on my worst enemy. The game crashing was a blessing because at that moment, I deleted this game straight off my PC. So yeah, thank you all for watching me attempt to guess like you for however long this video was. Thanks to Super Disco for joining me, and I'll see you all in a serious FNAF fan game review later this month. Take care. Nah, everyone should play this game. You said it yourself, it's one of the most impressive games you've ever played. It isn't an impressive game, and it's by far one of the worst best FNAF fan games you've ever played. Worst. Best. Worst. Best. Worst.